Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. This is uh, part four of my little mini series around masking. I did brush masking, I did radial masking, I did gradient masking, and this one, number four, is a luminosity masking. Super easy to use, very powerful. It's a wonderful tool to have in Luminar. So um, first things first is some people might say, like, what's a luminosity mask? Um, and as you know, masking is about painting and using different tools to basically selectively apply your edits to certain parts of the photo. With the brush mask, you can just paint it in. With the radial mask, you draw kind of a circle or oval shape. With the gradient mask, you can drop in like a, uh, a horizontal and you know cover the whole top of the photo. But with the luminosity mask, it basically automatically divides the photo based on luminance values or how bright certain parts of the photos, um, photo is. And so what it'll do is it'll apply the mask more heavily to the bright parts and less heavily, in fact, if uh, to the dark parts. And in fact, if they're really dark, it'll get no mask at all. So it's a great way to basically separate highlights and shadows, if you will, and apply masking to those. And if for some reason you want it different or opposite, you can actually just invert the mask. So very powerful, very easy to use. Let me just show you. Here's a photo. I'm going to do this on a layer, and that's simply because that's kind of how I like to do it. But keep in mind that the masking options exist on filters as well. So you can also do a luminosity mask just for a certain filter. But for my demonstration, I'm going to use a preset where I look, and I'm going to stick it on a layer and then apply a luminosity mask just to show you how it works. So I'm in the layers panel here. I'm going to say plus, add new adjustment layer. There's adjustment layer one, and I'm going to go get a look. And I'm gonna get this one called Know Your Onions. It's from uh, one of my old preset or looks packs that I built for Luminar 3. And you know, wow, it's over the top. Um, and that looks terrible. And I'm gonna be the first to admit it, even though it's a preset of mine. Um, but it, it works really well in luminosity masking. And that's because, because the luminosity masks apply based on the light values, the distribution of this insane color is much more subdued when you do a luminosity mask. So let me just show you. Again, I'm on the layer. You just go to Edit Mask and you click on Luminosity and you give that a second and it'll calculate and then build and apply the luminosity mask to your photo automatically. And there it is. Now, if you look at that compared to what it did look like, very different, right? Much more subdued. And in fact, that to me looks like a kind of a beautiful sunset. So here's the thing. Um, if you want to edit the mask, you go in and don't click on Luminosity again. Click on brush, the same as in radial or gradient masking. And if you click on the little icon there, that will show you the mask. And so that's what I mean by luminosity mask. Yeah, the, the brighter parts of the photo have more masking. In other words, this pinkish red mask color is more intense in the areas that are bright and less intense in the areas that are dark. If you look at the rocks here, it's almost non-existent there because uh, they're so dark that they're picking up very little of the mask and therefore very little of that preset You know intense color effect is being applied there Whereas it's being applied more heavily across the brighter parts of the photo But even notice that uh, Within the brighter parts of the photo, which is the sky and the reflection Which is actually a whole lot of this photo, which is why I have this one as an example, but um, You can see it's darker red in some parts and then it gets lighter kind of pink and so that's what I mean by the effect is much more subtle. It's basically an opacity difference. It's, it's completely 100% opacity uh, where it's dark red and then it becomes pinker and pinker and light. And you're seeing a lot of the blue come through here because that's kind of some of the darker parts of the photo. So you're getting very little of that color intenseness uh, from that preset or that look in those areas. And that's what I mean by it's subtle. It automatically applies that based on light values it's a great way, I think, to uh, you know add some subtle effects to your photos. And here's what I like to do. I like to come in, in this case, with the eraser, and I'm gonna left bracket key, and I'm just gonna erase it from this rock because honestly, the rocks, I don't need the rock to have any of that color in it. I'm, I'm okay with it being kind of almost a silhouette kind of thing. So I'm kind of doing a sloppy job, which I always say in videos, and it's always true in videos, uh, but I'm just kind of running over the the rock and the rock reflection just to kind of basically remove the mask and I'm sure I didn't really do a great job whoops uh, but there we go and I'm gonna say done um, and now here's a couple things I like to keep in mind with luminosity mask number one you can paint in or out so if I paint in um, which you can do with the same brush I just did for that erase 
but just check your opacity because you may not want to paint in at full opacity. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind the erasing that I just did. I don't need any of that color being applied to the rock. Don't want it, don't care. Two other things I think about with luminosity masking. Number one is blend mode. It defaults to normal on blend mode, but come in here and take a look at these and you might say darken, you might say multiply, color burn, not so good. Lighten's pretty good, actually that looks nice. It's very subtle because of the blend mode, right? So that's something that will impact how your, your colors uh, and things are gonna look when you're applying uh, filters or looks or preset, or any of these words that I'm intermingling. Um, but like soft light looks pretty nice. In fact, I'm gonna choose soft light. And here's the other thing. Don't, don't forget about opacity um, on layers. So if I take that to zero opacity, of course, none of that is gonna show through, but you might take this down to 79 or 80. Um, and do you remember how intense that look or preset was? And you look at it now, and that's a very subtle, beautiful sunset, which um, to me is actually almost lacking a little bit of color simply because I like my colors, guilty as charged, can't help it. But just keep that in mind. Luminosity mask, very powerful, great way to do subtle enhancements. Even if you have a preset or look that seems over the top, um, you could also do this with filters or look, uh, tools. Um, if you didn't use a, a preset or a look, if you just applied a bunch of filters or tools and jacked up the color and said, oh, that's a little too much, don't forget, try a luminosity mask and see how that looks because it will make a different look in your photo. And you might end up with something like this, which to me is a great looking photo at this point. And here's something else I often do. I'll add a new adjustment layer. I'll go get a, another look and I might stack that on top of the previous look. And I'm totally making up not this idea, but what this look might do. So I might take this one, which adds a bit more of that blue into it. Um, and then I might come in here and once that gets applied, again, way too much, I'm gonna say luminosity mask. And there it is, there's a luminosity mask. Let me just show you that. So edit mask, brush, and let me show you the luminosity mask. Very cool, this is where you could invert if you wanted to and invert that mask. Um, it doesn't look good on this photo, but just keep that in mind if you want it to impact the shadows more than the highlights, invert the mask. I'm gonna invert back because it looks kind of too blue for me. Um, but it doesn't look that bad there. And once again, I would probably just take this opacity down. I think I might leave the blend mode the way it is. But the point is you have endless creative options using luminosity masks, blend modes, and opacity sliders on the layer to really come to a, a whatever creative vision you have for the photo or you know what, it happens a lot with me. You end up with something that you didn't really envision, but you just kept stacking stuff and playing around and experimenting until you found something that really uh, kind of lit you up, so to speak. So that's what I would say about luminosity mask. Very powerful, very flexible, very fun, very easy, but it's really all about the luminance or the light values in the photo and applying a mask automatically that applies to the brighter parts and then adjusting accordingly, or as they say, season to taste. And that's really it. This was my deep dive on lumino luminosity masking. As I said, fun, powerful, easy. It's a great tool to have in Luminar and I um, hope you take advantage of it. And I do appreciate you watching. Um, I've got a lengthy list of Luminar 4 videos I wanna do, um, but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do next. So if there's certain things you would like me to address, by all means, please leave a comment down below and let me know. Love for you to interact with me as well. Uh, make some comments about this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that you like this video. And if you haven't yet, please do subscribe. Plenty more things coming. And I'm also gonna start mixing back in um, some other products that I've been using. I had so many Luminar 4 things I wanted to cover, and I feel like I've covered uh, a whole lot in a short amount of time. And I'm gonna start mixing it up again and doing some other things as well. So look for those coming as soon as I get to them. And uh, other than that, if I don't speak to you before the holidays, have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. Thank you for watching and subscribing and following along. I do appreciate it. I'll see you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.